Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. This month and this month only, I am bringing back Top 5 Friday. So today we are here to talk about my top 5 favorite classic horror literatures. <laughs> I want to say books, I want to say stories, but some of these are novels, some of these are short stories, so whatever. We're just going to go with it. So at number 5, I have The Exorcist by William Blatty, I believe is the author's name. Um, it was one of those books that uh, finally lived up to the, you know, to, like, the classic film kind of thing. I think it's one of the first uh, times, and I know this is going to sound terrible and completely antithetical to all things bookwormish, but it was one of the first times where the book lived up to the movie for me. Um, I remember watching it very, very young, and it terrified the crap out of me. Um, I read the book later on in life. Um, I was a bigger watcher of television and uh, video game, playing video games and, you know, the occasional book here and there um, until my later teens, and then I just read with wild abandon. Um, the Exorcist is the first book that... Uh, that truly unsettled me to the point where I didn't know if I wanted to pick it back up again and I read it I believe I believe it was either late teens or my early 20s when I finally did read it and it lived up to all my expectations so next on the list we have Psycho by Robert Block um, this is one, another one of those ones uh, where I, I saw the movie, loved the movie, uh, came across the, the book, decided to read it, and there was just enough different in the book, like uh, the, the main character, Bates, um, is a, a fat dude in, in the book, but in the only adaptation there is, of course, we have Anthony Perkins in the titular role. Um, Norman Bates. I was trying to remember his first name. Anyways, um, that was another one that lived up for me. I love the bait and switch. Uh, this was my favorite part of the movie. Um, I enjoyed it in the book, and I'm wondering how much of a bait and switch it was back in the day. I do, I do like uh, chubby, ugly Norman Bates more than uh, I, I like, uh, you know, Anthony Perkins as uh, Norman Bates. But w what you gonna do? Um, so that's my number four. Uh, these aren't, I should say these aren't really in any order. Um, I'm just going through these and talking about them um, because I don't think I would put these last three anywhere. I, I think I'd put them all together in, in the same lumped up number one spot or whatever. So next up we have Frankenstein, which I've already reviewed this week. Um, it, it was a, the book was a lot of fun and I loved the character development for Victor. Um, I loved all the, this sounds terrible, but I loved all the horrible things that happened to him. Um, I loved the creature most of all. Um, everything that the creature went through, it was just following, just, just wanting to be accepted, just wanting a mate. Um, and it, it, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of things with, with, with that one that I, I feel might not have been ahead of their time. I'm pretty sure they are, or else it wouldn't be such a big, uh, such a big deal in the, in the literature. But um, I, I do, I don't like the movie at all. I went back and I watched the movie, um, and I much, much prefer the book over it, uh, especially since, you know, in the movie there's a castle, there's no castle, and this one is just more down to earth and less, uh, spectacular and fantastic, uh, than, uh, you know, the, the movie is more, uh, geared toward the horror crowd, where this is horror, most definitely horror, I'm not saying it's horror. Um, I'm not saying it's not horror. Uh, I am saying it's horror. Uh, it's it's one of those stories that uh, goes beyond any genre, um, and I, I like I I dig that quite a bit. The message behind it, playing God, all that stuff, I really dig that. Um, speaking of messages, next one on the list is Doctor Jekyll: The Strange Case of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, I dug the hell out of the message here. The uh, and I've already reviewed it on the channel this week. Uh, it should be yesterday's video, actually. Um, but the message of the duality of man, how we all have a good person and a bad person inside of us, and it all depends on what triggers those things. Sometimes you don't have, there doesn't have to be a trigger. Um, it just happens and you split or, you know, whatever, however you want to look at it. I also find it 
very cool that you know we are not everything that people see um, I think that's a good message also you are not who you are to other people you're not even really who you are to yourself um, so uh, anyways but that's a that's a discussion for a whole other video I really liked that story the last one and probably it is number one um, and it's it's one of the one of the coolest concepts and I can only imagine how mind-blowing it was when it was first written um, and that is the yellow wallpaper uh, that the, the short story it doesn't overstay its welcome it's a uh, very it's open-ended but it's not you're watching this woman's decline over time um, and is it madness is it a haunting is it I, I love stories like that no matter what the outcome um, and I, I think the author nailed it with that one but those are my top five here at the end I'm going to admit, like I did in my review of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, um, I have not read a whole heck of a lot of classic horror literature um, because I don't like the style in which it's written. Um, but I am going to go back for next year. Uh, for Classics Weeks ne next year, I'm going to be reading The Monk by Matthew Lewis. I'm going to be reading uh, The Mysteries of Udolfo by Anne Radcliffe. Who, that book's considered the first horror novel or the first novel with supernatural terrors or whatever it is. Um, I'm going to be reading, let's see here, uh, The Castle of uh, Otranto? Otranto? I'm not sure. But anyways, I'm going to be reading several classics. Um, if you want to give me your favorites down there in the doobly-doo, um, I, if I haven't read them, I'll try to get to them. Or I will. At le I need two more spots is what I need. Um, I had the first three already figured out. I'm going to spend the next year you know, reading over them because especially I think The Mysteries of Udolfo is like a thousand pages long. I don't know. Uh, the Woman in White is another option by Wil Wilkie, Wil Wilkie Collins. White, well, I don't know. The Woman in White is one of them. But if you have other suggestions, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, but that's it. If you've read any of these, if any of these are your favorites, if you want to tell me a list of your own favorite classic horror novels, please do so down there in the doobly-doo because I'm always learning. I like to keep it keep it fresh even if I have to go back to the old times to keep it fresh but uh, until next time I have been E you have been you this has been another episode of 31 days of Halloween I'll talk to you guys later bye bye